Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our November the 24th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. Lesson 328, we're reading out of the original edition. I choose the second place to gain the first. I choose the second place to gain the first. What seems to be the second place is first, for things we perceive are upside down until we listen to the voice for God, for the voice of God. It seems that we will gain autonomy, but by striving to be separate, and that our independence from the rest of God's creation is the way in which salvation is obtained. Yet all we find is sickness, suffering, and loss, and death. This is not what our Father wills for us, nor is there any second to his will. To join with his is but to find our own. And since our will is his, it is to him that we must go to recognize our will. <laughs> so since we're looking at everything upside down, it seems like we're sacrificing or that we're not getting, um, that we're putting ourselves back to let God's will come forth. But really, it's just because we're seeing things upside down until we learn to hear the voice for God in every perception. And that's the miracle-mindedness that we're trying to reach to. And as we're trying to reach there, we're going to say, I choose the second place to gain the first. And then our prayer says, There is no will but yours. I am glad that nothing I imagine contradicts what you would have me be. It is your will that I be wholly safe, eternally at peace. And happily I share that will which you, my Father, gave as part of me. I choose the second place to gain the first. All right, let's uh, take a look in our text reading for today. And we're ready for, uh, we finished grandeur versus grandiosity yesterday. Today, the inclusiveness of creation. The inclusiveness of creation. All right, and a word we're going to be having in here that you may be new to some of you, ephemeral. And it means lasting a short time or changeable. So the ephemeral creation is the changing creation, or, you know, everything that changes in the world of perception. This world seems to always change. They say the one thing you can always count on is change. <laughs> All right, and that's in the world of perception. So ephemeral, uh, lasting a short time or changeable. And as you're turning to uh, chapter nine, uh, section 8, The Inclusiveness of Creation. Let me tell you about uh, this little plant I have here. You all know what these are. These are leeks. I've just recently started eating them, and I just love them. Um, I, I put them in, you know, you can chop them up and mix them in with vegetables or uh, steam them or stir fry them, I suppose. But I tell you what, a lot of, I like just this part right in here particularly, uh, steamed. Uh, cut the little roots off. And uh, I usually cut it into a few pieces and put it in the steamer with some uh, some kale or something generally. Uh, but boy, that sure is tasty. You know, kind of a sweet. It's an allium. Uh, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about alliums. Uh, allium ampelopricum. Not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Is the Latin name for leeks. I found this on foodrevolution.org about alliums, which, you know, your, your uh, onions and garlics and leeks are your alliums. It can, and uh, it says, contains sulfur in the form of organosulfur compounds. These compounds have widely known health benefits. For instance, they have antioxidants, antiviral, and antibacterial properties. They've also been shown to help prevent blood clots, be anti-inflammatory, immune boosting, and potentially anti-aging. All right, so uh, those are, 
And, and something else that I wanted to, to mention to you, uh, you've heard me talk about jo Dr. Joel Furman. He, he made the acronym G-bombs. G-bombs are foods that he says are immune, are the immune special forces and the best anti-cancering and health promoting foods. And they're greens. This is, is the acronym G-BOMBS, B-O-M-B-S, G-B-O-M-B-S. Anti-cancer, oh, excuse me, greens is the G, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And he recommends eating some of those every day. And so I, I usually always have a little, in my salads, I always try to put a little, of course, you're getting greens in a salad, and I always try to put some onions in it. And, and uh, you know, and, but then the other things that he recommends having on a daily basis are mushrooms, berries, and beans, and seeds. So, um, so anyway, I, I think a lot of Dr. Joel Furman and some of his ideas. Um, maybe we'll look at uh, some of the different varieties later of leeks. The one that I plan on planting myself next year is the giant Musselberg, an heirloom that was introduced in 1834 near Edinburgh, Scotland. Large, very thick stems, tasty, mild flavor, grows well in most locations, perfect for home or market. This old favorite has a huge size and is very winter hardy. So it sounds like we can grow that one even through the winter, you know, until it gets really, really cold. Uh, we'll, li we'll look a little more about beets maybe, or leeks tomorrow, maybe. Let's go ahead and take a look at our, our, uh, our reading. And, um, and I still haven't got any sprouts to pop through on these broccoli sprouts. So here we're several days into it. I would have expected they would have sprouted by now. The inclusiveness of creation. Nothing beyond yourself can make you fearful or loving because nothing is beyond you. Time and eternity are both in your mind and will conflict until you perceive time solely as a means to regain eternity. You cannot do this as long as you believe that anything which happens to you is caused by factors outside yourself key idea. Nothing's happening by factors outside yourself. You're the maker of your world. It's all from mind. What's going on? What thoughts and you're thinking and what feelings you're feeling? You must learn that time is solely at your disposal and nothing in the world can take this responsibility from you. You can violate God's laws in your imagination, but you cannot escape from them. They were established for your protection and are as inviolate as your safety. 60. God created nothing beside you and nothing beside you exists, for you are part of him. What except him can exist? Nothing beyond him can happen because nothing except him is real. Your creations add to him as you do, but nothing is added that is different because everything has always been. What can upset you except the ephemeral? And how can the ephemeral be real if you are God's only creation and he created you eternal? Your holy, your holy will establishes everything that happens to you. Every response you make to everything you perceive is up to you because your will determines your perception of it. Wow. 61. I feel like I need to say something about that paragraph. In the middle it says, Your creations add to him as you do, but nothing is added that is different because everything is up to you. Oh, everything uh, has, because uh, everything has always been. What can upset you except the ephemeral, the changeable? And how can the changeable be real if you are God's only creation? and he created you eternal. Your holy will establishes everything that happens to you. Very, very important idea that, that your will, every response you make to everything you perceive is up to you because your will determines your perception of it. 61. God does not change his mind about you for he is not uncertain of himself. 
and what he knows can be known because he does not know because he does not know only for himself he created you for himself but he gave you the power to create for yourself so you could be like him that is why your will is holy can anything exceed the love of god can anything then exceed your will nothing can reach you from beyond it because being in god you encompass everything believe this and you will realize how much is up to you when anything threatens your peace of mind ask yourself has god changed his mind about me <laughs> okay when anything threatens your peace of mind remember i tell you over and over stop ask for help well, he's saying here, when you're stopping to ask for help, you can say to yourself, has God changed his mind about me? Of course not. He still wants your beloved son to be happy and feel the abiding, everlasting peace. The peace that passes understanding, as the um, epistle writer wrote, Paul probably, 63. Then accept his decision. After you've said, has God changed his mind about me? Then accept his decision, for it is indeed changeless, and refuse to change your mind about yourself. God will never decide against you, and he would be deciding against himself. Oh, or he would be deciding against himself. The reason you do not know your creations is simply that you would decide against them as long as your minds are split, and to attack what you have created is impossible. But remember that it is as impossible for God. The law of creation is that you love your creations as yourself because they are part of you. Everything that was created is therefore perfectly safe because the laws of God protect it by his love. Any part of your mind that does not know this has banished itself from knowledge because it has not met its conditions. Who could have done this but you? Recognize this gladly, for in this recognition lies the realization that your banishment is not of God and therefore does not exist. You're always with God. <laughs> Only in your mind can you uh, think that you're separated. Only in your dream. You are at home in God, dreaming of exile, but perfectly capable of a of awakening to reality it is your will to do so you know from your own experience that what you see in dreams you think is real as long as you are asleep yet the instant you waken you know that everything that seemed to happen did not happen at all you do not think this mysterious even though all the laws of what you awaken to were violated while you slept is it not possible that you merely shifted from one dream to another without really waking? Wow, he's using the experience of a dream and saying, is it possible that when you woke from the dream, which you realized was just a dream, it's not reality, because it possible you merely shifted from a sleeping dream to now what might consider a waking dream, but still dreaming? And if you're not thinking with God, you are. That's the point he's trying to make. 66. Would you bother to reconcile what happened in conflicting dreams? Or would you dismiss both together if you discovered that reality is in accord with neither? You do not remember being awake. When you hear the Holy Spirit, you merely feel better because loving seems possible to you. But you do not remember yet that it once was so. And it is in this remembering that you will know it can be so again. What is possible has not yet been accomplished. Yet what has once been is so now, if it is eternal. When you remember, you will know what you remember is eternal and therefore is now. <laughs> 67. You will remember everything the instant you desire it wholly. You will remember everything the instant you desire it wholly. For if to desire wholly is to create, you will have willed away the separation, returning your mind simultaneously 
to your Creator and your creations. Knowing them, you will have no wish to sleep, but only the will to waken and be glad. <laughs> Dreams will be impossible because you will want only truth. And being at last your will, it will be yours. Wow, isn't that a beautiful reading? Okay, well, let's stop there and let's go take a look. We'll be ready tomorrow for the decision to forget. But today, let's go take a look in, at our reading under I choose the second place to gain the first. I choose the second place to gain the first. What is creation? Creation is the sum of all God's thoughts in number infinite and everywhere without all limits. Only love creates and only like itself. There was no time when all that it created was not there, nor will there be a time when anything that it created suffers any change. Forever and forever are God's thoughts exactly as they were and as they are, unchanged through time and after time is done. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's kind of alerted me that I must be still dreaming to some degree. You know, hopefully I've woke a little bit. I'm kind of in that twilight zone, I expect. Probably where most of us are. But, you know, I, I, I always think, you know, that's hard for me to understand that the changeless reality of God, that everything's happening now and that it's, it's the only time there is, that time is even an illusion. So, you know, that, but, you know, I, I take on faith that these ideas are true and they've been proven to me so often because when I have trouble, I stop, I ask for help and I get my answer instantly. Uh, or, or at least I'm, 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 I'm awakened a little bit more, maybe I should say that. I'm not sure that I totally receive uh, a complete awakening each time I have a difficulty, but uh, at least I know I'm heading in the right direction, or at least I feel so feel like I'm listening to the one voice, and I hope you're learning to do the same thing. God's thoughts are given all the power that their own Creator has, for He would add to love by its extension. Thus His Son shares in creation and must therefore share in power to create. What God has willed to be forever one will still be one when time is over and will not be changed throughout the course of time remaining as it was before the thought of time began. Creation is the opposite of all illusions, for creation is the truth. Creation is the Holy Son of God, for in creation is His will complete in every aspect, making every part container of the whole. Its oneness is forever guaranteed and violet, forever held within his holy will beyond all possibility of harm, of separation, imperfection, and of any spot upon its sinlessness. We are creation, we the sons of God. We seem to be discreet and unaware of our eternal unity with him. Yet back of all our doubts, past all our fears, there still is certainty. For love remains with all its thoughts, its sureness being theirs. God's memory is in our holy minds, which know their oneness and their unity with their Creator. Let our function be only to let this memory return, only to let God's will be done on earth, only to be restored to sanity, and to be but as God created us. Our Father calls to us, and we hear His voice. Our Father calls to us. We hear His voice and we forgive creation in the name of its Creator, holiness itself, whose holiness His own creation shares, whose holiness is still a part of us. And once again, on Lesson 328, I choose the second place to gain the first. What seems to be the second place is first. For all things we perceive are upside down until we listen to the voice of God. It seems that we will gain autonomy, but by our striving to be separate, and that our independence from the rest of God's creation is the way in which salvation is obtained. Yet all we find is sickness, suffering and loss, 
and death. This is not our Father's will for us, nor is there any second to His will. To join with His is but to find our own. And since our will is His, it is to Him that we must go to recognize our will. And the prayer for I choose the second place to gain the first, there is no will but yours. And I am glad that nothing I imagine contradicts what you would have me be. It is your will that I be wholly safe, eternally at peace. And happily I share that will which you, my Father, gave as part of me. I choose the second place to gain the first.